Did you know that you can emulate Android apps on Apple Silicon Macs? Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tsai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Android app and game emulation on M1 and M2 Apple Silicon Macs, talk about some game compatibility and also some of the limitations too, and we're also going to do a full install tutorial. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So the first thing to mention is that when the M1 Apple Silicon Mac was first announced, one of the major features that was touted was the ability to play iPhone and iPad apps natively on the desktop. However, the reality is that this hasn't really come to pass. That's because many developers have opted out of including their apps on the Mac App Store. And therefore, if you want to get some of these games running, you need to sideload them using something called Play Cover. I'll leave a link at the top of the description for my video tutorial. And so because not all iOS apps are available on the App Store and some of them can't be sideloaded using Play Cover, a lot of people over the years have been asking about Android app emulation on Apple Silicon hardware. So for many, many years, if you wanted to emulate Android games on a PC or a Mac, then you'd have been turning to something called BlueStacks, which is an Android emulator. However, ever since the release of Apple Silicon M1 and M2 chips, BlueStacks has unfortunately not been able to update their product to get Android emulation working on Apple Silicon hardware. It's now been nearly two years since the release of the original M1 chip. And it really looks like BlueStacks is probably never going to release an updated version for Apple Mac hardware. And this is obviously disappointing pointed a lot of different users. They're all waiting for this update to come, but I really think it's not going to come in the very near future. Instead, BlueStacks are really focusing on their other products, the cloud gaming service, as an alternative way of running these Android apps on your Mac. So therefore, if you want these games and apps to run locally, you're going to need a different method. So the method that we're actually going to show you today is using something called Android Studio. Now, this does have quite a few limitations. Not every game is going to work. We're not going to be able to run Apex Legends Mobile or any other high-end game like that. We're also conspicuously missing games like Genshin Impact or Tower of Fantasy. So this method is really going to be suited for lower end games. However, you're going to find that the performance of this is actually quite surprising. And there are quite a few games that will actually work fairly well. And this is all despite Android Studio only supporting OpenGL 3.0 as a graphics API. And Android Studio isn't really designed to be a consumer level emulator. It's really there for development work to test your own Android apps. However, it can be used to get some decent performance out of some Android games. So today I'm going to show you how to set up Android Studio for Apple Silicon hardware and also get some gaming working on it too. So we're going to go to the developer.android.com forward slash studio website. I'll leave a link to this in the description. And here what we're going to do is click on download Android Studio. We're going to scroll down here and then accept the terms and conditions. So we don't want the Mac with Intel chip version, which is going to use Red Hat 2. We want the Apple Silicon optimized version Mac with Apple chip. So I'm going to click on this and this is going to start the download. So once that's complete, we're going to go to Finder and go to our Downloads folder and then double click on Android Studio. And within this window here, we're going to click on Android Studio and then drag it to our Applications folder. Within Applications, we're going to find Android Studio here. I'm going to double click and then we're going to click Open to manually open this. So here we're going to click Do Not Import Settings, then press Don't Send. Then we're going to go through the Installation Wizard, press Next, Standard. You can choose between Dark and Light Themes. I'm going to stick to Dark, press Next. And now it's going to set up the full environment, press Next. Here we're going to press agree and accept all of the license agreement. Then we're going to select this license and then accept this as well. And press finish. So this is going to start downloading components. So once that completes its download, we're going to press finish. And then what we're going to do is create a new project. Here we're going to select no activity and press next. Then we're going to keep it on its default settings here and press finish. And that's going to download the Android SDK platform 32. So once that's done, we're going to press finish. And now we have Android Studio up and running and it's running as an Apple Silicon application. So once we're ready here, we're going to need to create a device. So what we're going to do is to click on the top right hand side here and click on device manager. So this Pixel 3a that's already been created does not have the Play Store enabled. So what I normally recommend that we do is go ahead and delete this, press yes. And then we go ahead and create our own device. I'm actually going to create a Pixel 2 because it has the Play Store enabled. This Play Store column is quite important because it's going to be a lot easier to install new apps if you have Google Play Store enabled. And we're going to be using the Pixel 2 because this is 1920 by 1080, which is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is going to work best for this Mac. You're going to press next. And then we're going to choose an API to use. So generally what I've found is that you don't necessarily want to use the very latest API because it might be harder to emulate. Taking the latest S version is probably 
probably sufficient. So we need to download the API in order to continue. So I'm going to press the download button here and it's going to go ahead and download this level 31 API. So now it's downloaded, we're going to press the finish button here. And then now we have the API level 31 ready to deploy. So here we're going to press next. We have a device Pixel 2 API 31. Then we're going to click on show advanced settings and then scroll down. And then what you probably want to do is to increase the size because if we want to download a few applications, it's going to take up a little bit of space. So here I'm going to press finish and then the Pixel 2 API 31 has been created. Here we're going to press play and now it's connecting to the emulator and the little window here has the phone booting up. What we can do to make this bigger is press the cog button here and then click view mode and then we'll put this into a window. And then you can double click on the title bar to full screen this and if you want to full screen it further you can press the screen button here and it'll full screen and hide this top bar here but we're going to continue like this. Now we have a pretty much fully working Android phone emulated on our computer. What we're going to do is to press the play button here and that's going to go into the Google Play Store and then we're going to sign in with our Google account. So I'm going to type in my email address and password using my Mac keyboard and you can do the same yourself or you can go ahead and create a fresh account as well. So once we've agreed to the terms and conditions it's going to start signing us in. I'm going to turn backup off and click accept and now we have the full Google Store available to us. So one game that I'm going to try is Angry Birds. Here we're going to download and install this. So once that's done we can press open and then this is going to basically run the full version of Angry Birds. We're going to rotate the screen to make this work a bit better. So this game pretty much works perfectly despite the fact that it is an Android game running through an emulator on the Apple Silicon Mac. So to go back to home, we just press the home button here and then we're back to this little screen and we can go ahead and rotate the phone back and then go back into the Play Store and then download some other games too. So we're going to try Summoner's War. So once that's downloaded, we can press the play button and then put this in the landscape and here we can go ahead and play the game. So this is a little bit more of a demanding game. It is quite old, but it is fully 3D. And this can actually work natively on Apple Silicon hardware as it was recently added to the App Store as an iPad app. And one of the big advantages of running it in Android Studio is the fact that we can choose a widescreen aspect ratio similar to a phone. So Android Studio is capable of running other casual games like for example, Subway Surfers, and it can also run a fairly casual game like The Walking Dead No Man's Land, which is a lightweight RPG tactics game. We can play a game like Plants vs Zombies 2, which has never seen a desktop release. And this one's pretty good too, because it can pretty much be fully played just using a mouse. I also tested out the game Geometry Dash Lite, and this seemed to work fine on the Android Studio. You could download the iPad version on the M1 Mac, or you could use the Steam version, despite the warning that it's not compatible. I have read reports that it does work. However, the Lite version could be played for free on Android Studio. I've tested other games, for example, Civilization VI, and unfortunately this doesn't work very well. It has a very, very low frame rate. You'd probably be much better off playing the full desktop macOS version on Steam. I also tested out PUBG Mobile, and quite surprisingly, I was actually able to load up a level and jump out of the plane. However, after I did that, it would consistently crash. So I definitely say that it's not playable, and also the frame rate looked pretty bad to begin with. And the most likely reason for this is gonna be the lack of compatibility of recent versions of OpenGL on Apple Silicon Macs. So anyway, it's a shame that a lot of these games don't work very well or are not compatible with Android Studio on Apple Silicon Macs. However, there are a few games that do work quite well. And as it stands, this is the only real way to get Android apps working on the M1 Mac. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you find any other interesting games that run on Android Studio, then please make sure to leave a comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.